In this video, I want to address a common point of confusion, which is what happens when we write both the empty set and a quantifier in a mathematical statement. If you haven't watched the previous video, Simple Proofs with Quantifiers, go watch that video first and then come back. I've written here two statements and I want to know whether they're true or false. The first one is for every x in the empty set, x is positive. And the second one says there exists an element x in the empty set such that x is positive. These two statements are actually very different. And in fact, one of them is true and one of them is false. I invite you to pause the video now and try to understand what they mean and why one is true when the other one is false. Okay, I'm going to concentrate on the first statement, statement number one first. In the previous video, we proved something very similar to this for a different set. We proved in one case that it was true and in another case it was false. So before I come back, before I do it for the empty set, let's go back to those examples. But this is what we did in that video. Given this set that I define as those three elements, I check that for every element in this set, x is positive. And the way we proved that was by going through all the, elem the elements one by one and verifying they were all positive. Then we wrote the same statement for the integers and we proved that it was false that all integers were positive. And the way we proved this was false was by finding one element in the integers that was not positive. So the summary is to prove something like this is true, I need to verify this is true for all the elements. And to prove something like this is false, I need to find one element for which this is false. So let's go back to the example with the empty set and let's try to do it in that case. Okay. I'm still concentrated only on the first, I'm still concentrated only on the first statement. And the key, the inequality we're playing here is this one. I'm going to call this inequality a star. And what we've learned from the previous two examples is that to prove that one is true, I would need to verify that all the elements in the empty set satisfy this. And I'm going to call it star for reasons that I will explain later. If I wanted to prove it's false, I would need to find one element that doesn't satisfy that. So which one of those two things can I do? The answer is I can do this, but not that. Can I verify that all the elements in the empty set satisfy that? Yes, there are exactly zero elements in the empty set and all zero elements in the empty set satisfy that. So all the elements in the empty set satisfy that. There are no elements, there are zero elements, all zero elements satisfy that. So I can certainly do this. On the other hand, if I wanted to do that, I would need to find one element in the empty set that does not satisfy that. I can't do that because I cannot find one element in the empty set period. So I cannot do the second thing. So this is good. If I were able to do both, that could mean that I got a contradiction and that's not good. It means this is true. I'm able to verify that all zero elements of the empty set satisfy that. I'm not able to find a single element that doesn't satisfy it. And after thinking about this, if we think about statement number two, I cannot find one element that satisfies that either. So that would be false. The moral of the story is that it doesn't really matter what this expression that they call a star wars, a, sorry, star was. If I have a statement that says for every x in the empty set, whatever you want, that's always going to be true. And if I have a statement that starts by saying there exists x in the empty set such that whatever you want, that will always be false. 